So during the primaries, if you'll recall, I laughed at the idea that, you know, Bernie Sanders can't be the nominee uh, because he'd just be too far left. And the GOP is going to fearmonger about a socialist being the Democratic Party's nominee and it's going to lead to Bernie losing. I mean, I maintained, rightfully so, and I've been proven right, that it doesn't matter who the Democrats choose as their nominee, that person automatically will be labeled a socialist because that's been the playbook that the Republican Party has used now for a very long time. I mean, I don't have to remind you, they literally tried to make you think that Obama was some sort of secret Marxist and socialist. That's laughable. He was just a moderate Republican. So after, you know, um, the Democrats nominated one of the most conservative options, perhaps the only other more conservative person was Mike Bloomberg, the GOP is uh, predictably doing what I said they do saying that he's basically a socialist. But because that argument doesn't really resonate with people any longer, they did have to uh, tweak that argument a little bit. So rather than idiotically saying Joe Biden is a secret Marxist, as they said about Obama, now they're saying, well, he's not necessarily a Marxist or a socialist, but he's being controlled by the radical left who are definitely socialists and Marxists. For example, Trump tweeted this, saying the radical left Democrats who totally control Biden, I wish, will destroy our country as we know it. Unimaginably bad things would happen to America. Look at Portland, where the police are just fine with 50 days of anarchy. We sent in help. Look at New York, Chicago, Philadelphia. No. I mean, there's so many stupid things uh, within that one tweet. I don't even know where to begin. First of all, if the left were controlling Joe Biden, I uh, would be really happy. He would right now be supporting Medicare for all vocally. He'd be supporting defunding the police and pot legalization. But the fact that he doesn't support those things when he needs our votes shows you that we don't actually control him. If that were true, maybe I'd like him. But that's not true. Um, you know, and uh, Donald Trump, he doesn't really even know how to be specific in attacking Joe Biden. So he just has to say unimaginably bad things would happen to America. Like what? You can't say because you don't necessarily know and because you can't really imagine what America would be like down the road if things are really unimaginably bad right now when you're literally sending federal goons to cities to occupy them, to treat American citizens as terrorists. I mean, so it's not going to really land. But aside from the fact that I think it's ineffective, the attacks that we're seeing on Joe Biden from Republicans, it's just downright stupid. And I think that it's probably not going to help Donald Trump. If anything, it may actually help Joe Biden. And I say that because when you consider the demographics that Joe Biden is struggling with the most, young people, there's a lack of enthusiasm. Um, what, what the Republicans are basically doing is campaigning for Joe Biden to young people. For example, the official Team Trump Twitter account tweeted this out. Bernie Sanders said that Joe Biden has moved a whole lot in many areas towards adopting Sanders' far-left policies. Crazy Bernie and the radical left control Joe Biden and will run America if he is elected president. And they, of course, share a picture of Bernie Sanders taking off a Joe Biden mask. Now, <laughs> there's a number of reasons why that's stupid. First of all, you're trying to say that Joe Biden is being controlled by the most popular United States Senator. I mean, you could pick anyone else and it'd make more sense, but if you're trying to hurt someone politically, associating them with someone who's incredibly popular and loved by young people, a demographic who he's currently hurting with, isn't necessarily a good strategy, right? It wouldn't behoove you to get people to think that Joe Biden is a lot like Bernie Sanders. That's good for Joe Biden. The more he is seemed to be in alignment with Bernie Sanders, that helps Joe Biden. If this were true, if Bernie really were controlling Joe Biden to that extent, I think he would be in an even bigger lead than he is now. And certainly, you know, that, that may be something that you view as conjecture because there's no way to really prove that. It's speculation. But I mean, Bernie Sanders is popular in spite of the fact that um, people voted for Joe Biden. They supported Medicare for all overwhelmingly, according to exit polls. So for you to do this, to use this strategy, I don't know what you're thinking. It's like you're campaigning for Joe Biden, but it gets even better because take a look at what Vice President Mike Pence said about Joe Biden and what he uh, apparently wants to do with regard to climate change. Who withdrew America from the job-killing Paris Climate Accord and saved thousands of American jobs. 
Joe Biden wants to join the Paris Climate Accord again, placing a crushing weight on American businesses and the American economy. I mean, under President Trump, the United States has actually achieved energy independence, no longer relying on the Middle East for oil. And now America is a net exporter of energy for the first time in 75 years. <laughs> Joe Biden would destroy our fossil fuel industry. Yes, you heard that correctly. You uh, are not mistaken. <laughs> Vice President Mike Pence just said that Joe Biden wants to go further than even Bernie Sanders. I mean, Bernie Sanders was talking about net zero greenhouse gas emissions. He wasn't actually talking about completely dismantling the fossil fuel industry. But what Mike Pence is communicating to people, um, particularly young voters, is that, hey, I know that you guys are not very enthusiastic about Joe Biden based on polling, but he's actually going to go further than Bernie Sanders in taking on this issue that is very near and dear to your hearts, climate change. Um, he's going to destroy the fossil fuel industry altogether. I mean, most Americans take climate change seriously and believe in climate change. So for you to basically campaign in this way against Joe Biden, it's like you're taking his biggest weaknesses and you're turning them into strengths for him. But believe it or not, it goes even uh, more in this direction uh, in terms of the hyperbole and how they're basically trying to make it seem like Joe Biden is more left wing than he is in actuality. Take a look at this, uh, because Joe Biden, if he wins, we're going to get socialism. Before us are two paths, one based on the dignity of every individual and the other on the growing control of the state. Our road leads to greater freedom and opportunity. Their road leads to socialism and decline. Now, I find it highly ironic that Mike Pence brings up, you know, freedom and uh, the uh, desire of Joe Biden to control us, you know, with big government as Donald Trump and his administration are literally occupying cities in America, even if the governor and uh, mayors are saying, get out, we don't want you here. So that's interesting. But basically, what he's saying here is, if you vote for us, you're going to get the America that you know and love. But if you vote for Joe Biden, you're basically going to get socialism. In other words, um, young people who hate Joe Biden, hey, guess what? I know that according to one poll, 70% of you actually support and prefer socialism to capitalism. But Joe Biden actually will give you socialism. I mean, at this point... They're basically campaigning for Joe Biden. They're telling young people who Joe Biden is currently struggling to attract that he's going to fulfill all of their hopes and dreams. This would be like Joe Biden saying, why would you vote for Donald Trump? He supports Medicare for all. I mean, it's equally stupid like that, right? But by all means, proceed, Team Trump, because you're going to lose if you keep doing this. Um, but look, here's the thing about this. If you want to claim that Joe Biden is far left, you, you can't be that hyperbolic if you want to be effective, right? You have to take one policy where he's actually bold and you have to really run away with that. But the problem for them is that Joe Biden is a moderate Republican. He's not really progressive. He's not that bold. So for them, all they can do is make things up about Joe Biden. But I think that even though this may inadvertently help Joe Biden, I mean, overall, most young people, they're informed. They're going to know what Joe Biden stands for. But if this doesn't help Joe Biden, I mean, it's certainly not going to help Donald Trump because the lengths that he's going to to, you know, smear Joe Biden as some sort of secret radical, it's just getting embarrassing. And it's getting especially embarrassing uh, when you watch him get fact checked in real time. So he was interviewed by Chris Wallace on Fox News this weekend, and he made an assertion about Joe Biden that was completely preposterous. He says Joe Biden wants to defund the police and abolish the police, uh, to which he was uh, fact checked and uh, subsequently embarrassed completely. And I honestly, I almost felt bad for him. And it's really because they want to defund the police and Biden wants to fund, defund no, he, the police. Sir, he does not. Look, he signed a charter with bernie sanders i will get that one just like i was right on the mortality rate did you read the charter that he agreed to? it says to nothing about the, defunding the oh police. really it says abolish it says a fund let's go all right get, well, me, you, get you, me the charter please all right Chris, you've got to start studying for these he incidents. says defund the police he says defund the police they talk about abolishing the police they talk about illegal I, I, aliens I look, I, look forward, I look forward to seeing that 
So let's see okay, what this says see. here. Prosecution, sanctuary cities, incentivize illegal alien, expand asylum, abolish immigration detention. No, I, that's not what well, no, I will find. OK, it. this thing is many pages well, long fine. End prosecution of illegal border crosses. Support deathly and these are the worst thing. Sir, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not disagreeing with you on any of those. I'm disagreeing about defund police. Incent the White House never sent us evidence the Bernie Biden platform calls for defunding or abolishing police because there is none. It calls for increased funding for police departments that meet certain standards. Biden has called for redirecting some police funding for related programs like mental health counseling. I mean, imagine being that confident when you're so wrong. I mean, this is the Dunning-Kruger effect. Um, so look, this is deeply embarrassing. You can you can kind of see the logic behind these attacks. Like what Donald Trump is trying to do is win back these you know suburban voters and whatnot. But here's the thing: Joe Biden is exactly what suburban voters want. Like what these moderate voters, he's everything that they can dream of. So you're not going to convince them by just outright lying about the policies that he supports. You, you're not. Nobody believes that Joe Biden is going to defund the police. Nobody believes that Joe Biden is a radical leftist. That is just absurd, even for the most, um, you know, uh, Kool-Aid drinking MAGA chat. Like, if you've bought in entirely, even you know that this is a lie. So you're not going to persuade anyone. But if this message actually gets out, uh, it's not going to hurt Joe Biden, but it could help him. As I alluded to earlier, if young people think, oh, I didn't know Joe Biden was actually radical and he supports defunding the police. Cool. Maybe I'll vote for him. So um, it's just it's hilarious that he thinks this is going to work. Associating Joe Biden with the most popular politician in America, that's not going to be something that will be conducive to your success. Right. If you want to win, you actually have to present policies to people. And while you're in charge right now. Do something about the pandemic. Do something about unemployment. Do something about the housing crisis. That's going to get worse as more and more people lose their jobs and their housing as a result. But I mean, Donald Trump doesn't know what to do. He has this one-size-fits-all approach to campaigning, and that is to just attack, attack, attack. Um, if he's not attacking Joe Biden, he's attacking the quote-unquote far left. He he doesn't know how to you know rekindle the magic that he saw in 2016. Um, and as a result, he's flailing and he's doing things like this where he's saying, hey, guys, Joe Biden is just like this person you all love and adore. Don't vote for him. I mean, this is utterly idiotic, but um, I'm not mad. I think he should keep up with this strategy if it means, you know, he's going to end up losing. And if he does lose, I don't necessarily believe it's going to be because of this strategy. I think that this is um, not going to be an important conversation that ends up leading to, um, you know, Joe Biden getting more votes and whatnot. I think that it's ultimately going to be due to Donald Trump's own incompetence, but certainly um, this isn't going to help at all. It shows you why he's not doing good. He doesn't know what to focus on. He, he's completely lost. And um, I'm not going to lie, I'm kind of enjoying watching this. You know, you, you, you know, <laughs> you know the, you know the thing, thing. You're getting nervous, man, man.